This is what I say to myself when I see my vehicle sitting too long. So I'm getting another code on the excursion. It's causing the passenger side bank to basically shut down and go into limp mode. That plug right there is what I'm gonna be replacing. I couldn't get it to do what it was doing, but the last time I tried to start it, smoke was coming under the engine and that thing was starting to smoke. So I got an Alliant pigtail harness and I'm about to make lemonade. Wish me luck. All right, all right. The goal is to minimize tearing down the engine. So I'm removing the glow plug relay and the anamantium detection override unit and the air intake pipe. This is gonna help me gain access to the pigtail harness that I need to unhook and peel back and repair. Some of the components removed, I can gain access to the undercover valve harness pigtail. Now this may not have been the actual problem, but as you can see, the retaining clip is broken on top. And what I'll be using is a self-soldering kit I got off of Amazon. I'll be making a separate video on that to keep this one short as possible. Okay, so the wiring undercover harness yeah, plugs in beneath this. And it's just a lot of things I just want, I didn't want to do. It's starting to get cold and I'm trying to cut corners. And I know that's not the way to do things, but uh, right now I don't care. I just, I want to get this, I want to get it done quick. And I really, I, I didn't bend anything. I didn't break anything. The only, I don't say damage was to the wire loom, but I'm going to reinforce that when I go to plug it back in. So basically this, sorry, this, I'm just going to splice into this, but I'm actually going to give myself a little bit of extra room so that when I go to plug it in, um, it, like I said, it just have a little bit more wiggle room because it is spliced into the rest of this wire loom that travels, sorry, you can't see my finger, but it travels all over here into the battery and over here. So I'll try to give up play by play, but the punchline is um, it's, it's a Saturday and I need this truck by Monday. So I'm not just gonna straight up and just start cutting. I'm gonna do, I saw a video on this and I'll reference the guy too because I really like how YouTube is letting you uh, reference people in the um, uh, description. I think that's pretty cool. And um, you know, he had the right idea and I'm just basically copying him with the exception of um, using the wire connectors that I'm using the uh, heat shrink stuff. Or maybe he did, I don't know, I can't remember. Anyways, I'm gonna do one for one. Cut a brown, connect a brown, and yeah, that'll be that. Okay, so before jumping to conclusions and taking advice from people, because I was told initially just to it, that it was the uh, undercover valve harness that was giving me problems and why this thing was giving me issues. I mean, look at this. I didn't do that. That's burned, charred, and you know, whatever, my, my, my wiring harness, okay? So that's why it was shorting out. All right, let's make lemonade. Now, I think that the culprit to this happening is a bracket above the valve cover. Even with the wire loom on, the vibration and heat is gonna rub so much that it's just gonna cause the wires to fray like this. You'll see for yourself when you pull the pigtail out at the bend, that is where the wire harness rubs against that bracket that I'm talking about. So my goal on the repair is to leave a little bit of extra room so that it's not gonna rub up against that bracket. And I know I said I was in a rush, but I'm gonna do one for one on this, one wire at a time. Now, I am by no means any kind of professional, so any work you do on your car, you're taking that responsibility on yourself. I am just simply trying to pass on what I have done to fix my problem. But please, as always, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Now, unfortunately, Caboose wasn't able to help me video, so this was a one-man operation. I apologize that you cannot see a lot of the work that I'm doing, but 
I think you get the gist of what's going on. I've cut wires on both sides and then I join them together after I've put the connector on. Then using my butane lighter that Caboose has affectionately dubbed as my crack pipe lighter, heat up the solder and the adjoining parts. Now most of you guys that watch my video have been pretty good about not nitpicking, but I'm gonna let you know, the heat shrink wrap over the connector is not meant as like a watertight fitting. It's as a buffer because that part is what's going to be going around that bracket that caused the problem in the first place. And by the way, I am putting a little bit of flux on the wires before I slide the connector over and heat the solder. Now this didn't take an incredible amount of time, but I was really taking my time doing this because I was laying across the engine bay on a blanket and I didn't want to break anything. And I really just wanted to make sure that I was getting things done the right way. Not too bad if I do say so myself. So like I mentioned earlier, I wanted the extra amount of length on the wire harness so that it would go around this bracket and not rub up too much against that you know bracket before I plug it into the harness. I know there's gonna be some rubbing and friction, but I wanted to uh, eliminate as much as I could. And the only way for the pigtail to meet up again is underneath that wire loom right there. That's why I did not try to go up and over by the piping. Okay, so I got the wire harness plugged back in and I made them longer so that the bend on this uh, bracket right here is gonna have a little bit more room and I am still gonna wrap it up and uh, insulate it, but it has a lot more wiggle room and hopefully that'll, you know, keep it in the, f I mean, it'll probably take a long time before it happens again, but I mean, it's not gonna, you know, rub up in the next, you know, you know year or so, I can only assume, but that was hopefully the fix. And I got the pipe back on, <laughs> but I lost uh, the nut off of, the hose clamp here and the one down below so uh, I'm doing this in the dark now because I had to go to three different stores to get it but I'm about to finish up and hopefully I can wrap up this video tonight and do um, a startup and a diagnosis uh, di Jesus I can't talk right now man I'm so cold um, uh, what do you call it a car scan and hopefully it'll clear all the uh, the codes that I was having so stand by stand by so I got the uh, pipe back on, the air pipe right here. I'm not even I'm not even gonna guess what, I think it's an intake pipe. Right now I'm just so, I'm so cold and just kind of happy that I, I got this all done, but I got it all plugged in. And the last thing I need to do is plug in the uh, glow plug relay, which I probably got that wrong too. Plugs in, goes in right there, and then I'm gonna fire it up and do a test on it. And if all goes well, I'm gonna have to take this thing back off because I still need to go through. And like I said, I was gonna wrap up all these, um, the, the wires that I just uh, soldered together. So that's the plan. Okay, just... Okay, no smoke and no fire. So that's a good thing. Okay, turn it off, turn it on again. All right, fire it up. Boo! Okay, so here we go.
Think I got to charge up a little bit more? We're going to make lemonade. And just to forewarn, I do know my check engine light is on, but I think it is going to stay on eternally because of the Pat's Delete, the passive active theft system. I had to do a uh, delete on it and sent it in and blah, blah, blah. And uh, yeah, it stays on now, but uh, let's make lemonade. All right, all right. So this car has been sitting for, oh gosh, at least a couple weeks now because I was trying to do all the research that I could and get the parts for it before I tackled it. I didn't want to do it kind of, uh, you know, half ass or anything, but thank God for the Googles and the YouTubes and, you know, a lot of people out there who are willing to take time to answer, answer questions. If you want to know the people I talk to, or if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. And I will definitely answer. If you want to get in contact with us, you can reach us at our Facebook page. Uh, I'm slowly getting into the technology of uh, uh, messaging. So let's, let's, let's keep it simple. We'll start with Facebook and we are at Vault Explorers 1337. You can message us there if you have any questions about anything, or if you just want to comment and Tell us how wrong I was and all the stuff I did and everything, blah, blah, blah. But anyways, thanks for all the new subscriptions. We kind of blew up today by doing a lot of the shorts. And yeah, we, we increased by 10. So thank you all you guys. Appreciate you and keep it up. And I'll cut it there. So thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time. Oh, and like and subscribe.